that as they're looking to see how we handle these things, we have the assurance knowing that when our brother closes his eyes to this world, he'll open them and see you face to face. But until then, give us the strength to continue to go on. And then, of course, the healing. And I pray, Lord, that you'll help Kim in the process. Give her that grace that only you can give at such a time as this. Uplift her and encourage her. Now, Lord, as we come together as a body of believers, I pray that you'll be in the service this morning. Help us to take it all in and learn from. Help us to grow together and lean upon each other, uplifting each other. Lord, we're so thankful to have each other for such a time as this. And so, Lord, we praise you. We say thank you. But, Lord, in the process, let us be the light and the encouragement. Let us be the testimony. Let us be the believers <coughs> that we need to be, that we must be. And we say thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. If you are a minister here at Faith Baptist Church this morning, if you would look right here and you'll see a little piece of paper like that in front of your pew, please fill that out. Stick it in the offered plate. Also, if you have noticed, we have cleaned up um, our uh, prayer list. If you look at that and you get that and you see somebody's not on there that you had on there, please fill one of these out too and stick it in there to make sure they're back on there because. We have to make room because we've had so many and so many have went off the prayer list that we had to get those off. So if you would do that for us, please. And you know, I look at death a whole lot different since I've become a Christian. Amen? Amen. You know, I wouldn't take anything from Brother Ed going and seeing the Lord. Would you? No, sir. Not a bit. And so we've got praises to give. Praises to give that there is a God out there. That hey. There is a God that's alive. <clears throat> so if y'all would stand with me, please. He lives. Thanks for being
if y'all are not so, uh, if y'all ain't a part of that, uh, you say, well, how in the world do I get to be a part of it? Well, here's a little, here's a little hook on that. Uh, it's their, their widows, widowers, single, and divorcees. You say, well, I'm married. I'm not advising you to go out and get a divorce. Just so you can get married. <laughs> uh, maybe we start a different <laughs> but I ain't asking y'all to do that. So anyhow, uh, they just get to have all the fun, yeah. Not necessarily. Not all. Damn it, and they got them a big program coming up Saturday. It'll be here at 1230. Oh, actually, 1 o'clock, it got bumped up a half hour. So. What? Yeah. All right, y'all heard it. 1 o'clock, be here at 1 o'clock, and then make your way over to the bowling alley. Uh, those youth are going to go uh, bowling on Saturday, and uh, all I can. It seems like they get to have all the fun. No, they don't. The Friday night is family night. We'll be back. Amen. 6 o'clock, be here. And uh, bring out the family. We're going to have a wonderful time, good fellowship. And don't ask what movie. Get here and find out. Sometimes I like a little secretive and, and be a little secretive with you on that and everything. The good part is bring stuff. The little piggies in a blanket, hot wings, you know, stuff like snack food that you get to snack throughout the movie. I don't know what y'all, but I like snacking throughout the movie. Amen. We'll probably have some hot dogs and some chili and things like that, popcorn. All that. So something or other is going to be to your life, and I promise you that. But if nothing else, it'll be good fellowship. And so that's Friday night, 6 o'clock, be here. And then Saturday, 1 o'clock, be here for the youth, those teenagers and everything. Tim's going to take them over to the uh, bowling alley. And then, of course, uh, as we're looking to the last Tuesday of the month, we're going to go over and put some Bibles together at the Bible Barn and meet here at 9 o'clock. And we'll make our way over there. And that is the last Tuesday of this month. And looking forward to that. Now, going into the next month, you know, Valentine's Day, all that sort of thing, this, that, and the other. Well, we're going to take a meet on that night, which is the 10th of February. We're going to meet over at Ruby Tuesdays. Now, here's the deal. It's 6 o'clock. It's what we're scheduled to be over there. But we'll leave here at 5.30 for those that are going over there that night. So 5.30, meet here at the church, and it is on the 10th of February. So put it on your calendar, something to look forward to. And so these things is what we're looking forward to moving forward. The good part is we have each other. Amen. Such a time as what we're going through right now, yes. saying goodbye to our brother. We have each other. Amen. And I thank God for that. I'd hate to be alone. I'd hate to be isolated and shut off. We have each other. And it's so good to be able to lean on. And, you know, Miss Linda, when you go through hard times, you can just pick up that phone and call your love and say, Hey, I need you to pray for me and know that they're going to. Amen. It's good that we have each other. That's why the overcomers, Brother Glenn, is so important. Yes, we have each other. Amen. And we thank God for such a time that we can be there one for another. Amen. All right. I'm going to go to Lord in prayer this morning. Ask his blessings upon the offering. You know, him. How about you ask God's blessing on the offering today and pray for the service? Father, who art in heaven, we come before you, Lord. We just thank you for a beautiful day, beautiful opportunity to be in your house and to worship you, Lord. We ask you to bless this offering, let it be used to thy service. We ask, Lord, that you watch over Kim as she goes through a, a troubling time right now. We know it's hard to let go of our loved ones, but we know that it's going to a better place. We just pray that you give them that comfort, give them your grace, oh Lord. Just pray that you be with uh, Kay as she can come back with her back problem. Just pray that you heal her body and all our other ones, Lord, that are suffering at this time. Thank you for your love, for your mercy, your grace, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.
She's an inspiration to me. Amen. Amen. When Lonnie was in the hospital, we did a lot of praying. Amen. We did a lot of singing, too. <clears throat> Brother Alex, every time I sang this song, Wait a minute. I think of you now. Because this is your Savior. Lonnie told me before he went into surgery that he was okay. He was ready to go home to meet the Lord. The only thing he said he hated was leaving me. Yeah. We prayed that he would make it through the surgery, and he did. Amen. So the Lord answered our prayers there. Amen. But shortly after that, he yeah. didn't make it. But Brother Alex, this is your saying, so this song is for you. Thank you. Jesus, 
each passing day. I'll have my healing here below for life forever if I go. Surgery, you can see. I bet you, Miss Lindy, he's singing today. Mm. What a deal. What a deal. Philippians in chapter number four. Philippians chapter number four. Verse number 10. The Bible says in verse number 10, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now, at the last your care of me hath flourished again. Wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, Therewith, to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Yeah. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now you Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again under my necessities, not because of desire of gift, but a desire of fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full and have received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you in odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. But my God, yes. but my God yes. shall supply all your needs yes. according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let's pray. I pray the Lord to speak to the hearts here today, the Lord being the message today as only you can, and remind us you gave us breath. And with that breath, we need to honor and please you. With that breath, we need to take and focus on the things of you. 
And with that breath, we need to utilize it while we can. Thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I've entitled this morning's message, Just Breathe. When I was uh, over in West Tennessee, I went to go buy a vehicle, and as I went to the show, uh, to the to the uh, dealership, and we were talking and everything, and you know how they do. They try to pressure. They make it sound, Tammy, like you've got to do this. This is the end of the world. If you don't do this, you, you've got to buy this vehicle. Boy, they pressure you, and they do all that. I looked at the guy, and I said, I'm here to tell you one thing and one thing alone. I said, my price range is right here. I already know I can breathe with this right here. Outside of that, I can't breathe. Four times, Brother Glenn, he would come back to me and I said, you're not listening to me, buddy. I said, I'll tell you what. I'm sorry I've taken up your time. Uh, I, I've got to go pick my boy up at school. I, 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 you have a good day. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. I said, you're not listening. I can breathe right here. That over there I can't breathe with. I can read with this. It's important for you to understand what you can read with. Yes. But still yet, just breathe. Right. Breathing is so important. We see in Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. We were talking about that in Sunday school this morning. The value and the importance of being that living soul that God's created is to be. And as long as that has breath and as long as he is alive. Thank God for that. You say, but preacher, you said he's shutting down his cross and over. That is a reality too. That is biblical too. Because the Bible says it's appointed to man once to die and after this the judgment. It's a reality to all of us that one day we all will die. But until then we will breathe. The breath of life. Day in and day out, we will breathe. And no matter what the circumstance and the situation, it is difficult. It's hard out there. But keep breathing. Job 14, verse number 1. Man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trials. You're going to have hardship and heartaches. You're going to have difficulties. You're going to have things that are hard to deal with. But guess what? Keep breathing. Keep breathing. I don't know about y'all, but I've been in a few fights over my lifetime, and in the process of that, it's not good to get hit in the gut. How many of y'all have ever been gut punched? Hmm? Maybe. <laughs> Takes the breath out of you, amen? you got to collect yourself. you got to regather your thoughts. you got to get that air going back into you. You know why? You need to breathe. you got to breathe. Sometimes life will hit you in the gut and it will take your wind from you, it seems like, but guess what? Still breathe. Keep breathing. <laughs> Keep breathing. <laughs> Why? When we do Psalms 150, if you will. The last chapter of Psalms 119. Or, or, or the last chapter of the book of Psalms, excuse me. 150, verse number 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Yes. Praise Him in the ferment of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Amen. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psalter and the harp. Praise Him with the timbre and dance. Praise Him with the string instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud sounding symbols. I like that this morning, Brother John, how my aunt got up there and, pray, uh, and played that she is 90 years old. Barely can get around, but boy, she can tickle those iris. Thank God for that. Why? Because it praises God. Yeah. It glorifies the name of the Lord. Read on. Praise Him upon the loud sounding symbols. Praise Him upon the high sounding symbols. Let everything that have breath praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Now think of this. Life is going to give you a lot of heartaches. You're going to get gut punched. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. No matter the circumstance and the situation, keep breathing. It's real easy, Brother Tom, when we're on the mountaintop, to throw their hands in the air and say, thank God for a beautiful day. But that's not the greatest place to be Praising God. Stand in that battle. 
than in that heartache time. Down in that spot where it looks like the walls are caving in and the world is coming upon you and everybody is against you. But God is always for you. Amen. Praise Him. Learn how to praise God in all things. And let God be glorified in that. Isaiah chapter 38, verse number 18. For the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. Brother Alex, later is too late. Right now is a great time to praise the Lord. To glorify Him and where we're at and what we do. Why? Because God's given you this opportunity. Verse number 1. Look at it with our verse, or verse number 10. The very first point I want you to see this morning. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. That now at last your care of me hath flourished again. Wherein you were also careful... But you lack opportunity. What Paul's talking to the church of Philippi here, he's saying, look, I get it. Before you didn't have the opportunity, but now you've got the opportunity again, and I thank God for that opportunity. I, too, am grateful for the opportunities that God's given to us. It's hard. It's difficult. I've had people ask me, why do you do funerals? Well, let me ask you a question. When's a better time to talk about the Lord? than right there at the presence of death. Amen. Y'all with me? Amen. You see, during those difficult hardship times, they need to know that there's still hope. They need to know that this ain't the end of the story. They need to know that there is a life after this one. There's a lot of people who are stupid that don't understand that. They don't know that. And it's our job, our obligation, it's our opportunity to share with them what God can do, what He has done, and what He will do. Opportunity. He said, look, I'm rejoicing now that you got the opportunity to care for me again, to take care of me again. I'm glad that opportunity's come back around. Moments will come and go, Brother Tom. But how will you live those opportunities between here and there is up to you. God likes a girl. Oh, he likes her. Oh, she's caught his eye. She comes walking by. He locks up and doesn't say a word. And on down the road she goes, Miss Brenda. I missed my opportunity. I should have at least spoken to her. You never know if I just would have talked to her. What could have come from that if I just would have opened my mouth and started to say hello at least. Missed opportunity. I think about all the missed opportunities in my life down through the time. Things I should have, would have, and could have done. Opportunities that God's given to us. But it's during those moments of time. I know a lot of us think, boy, if I was back in the time of the garden right there. By the way, don't ever sit and think that you're going to smack Eve. You ain't going to. Because if you've been in the garden during that period of time, they don't ever get your ear like you got ease. Amen. You would have fall too. That's right. Amen. You say, no, preacher, I would have, I would have stood up to him. I would have come at him with guns and blazing and everything. Really? Let me ask you this question. How many times have you faltered and fell to the old devil today? Yeah. Right. Your time is not the garden. Your time is not in the fiery furnace. Your time is not fighting Goliath. Your time is not all these stories we read about the Red Sea parting and all that. That's not your time. Your time is right now. You start looking around and seeing. Miss Dor said this morning, she said, you know, there seems to be a lot of sickness. A lot more sickness. Miss Dor said, I believe there will be a lot more sickness in the days ahead. Death. It's a reality. We're coming to the end of this thing, and how will we handle it? How will we deal with it? How will we utilize these opportunities in which God has put us here? Just breathe. Just breathe. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, go there with me. Verse 1 says, We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation I have secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Right now is your opportunity. Amen. Not later. Right now. 
Write it. Putting it off will not give you the right results. Putting it off does not help you none whatsoever. Right now, sometimes. Verse 3. Give me no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses. In all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God. That means, not only when it's good, also when it's bad. <laughs> when it looks like the sky is falling and the sea is drying up. And when it looks like all these things are coming to an end. I was reading a report this morning where they said in 2023, there's not going to be enough food for everybody. Huh. Is it true, preacher? I don't know. But I'm not dependent upon what they say or what they think. I'm not looking to them. If I was looking for the headlines in order for my life to be existing on the high or on the low, I promise you, I'd be down in the dumps Amen. all the time. I'd be looking for traffic to play in. Because in all what they say, it's geared to bring you down. Just breathe. No matter what the circumstance and the situation, God's got it. God's going to handle it. God's going to bring you through it. Read on as the ministers of Christ, rather, it be good to know rather be, look, he says, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, much patience and afflictions and the necessities and distresses. He's about ready to go into some personal things right here. In stripes and imprisonments and tumults and labors and watchings and fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. By the word of truth. By the power of God. By the armor of righteousness. On the right hand and on the left. By honor and dishonor. By evil report and good report. As deceivers. And yet true. How many of y'all have ever been on the outs and they didn't like what you were saying? Hmm? How many of y'all ever heard the term, don't shoot the messenger? You know why that's such a reality is because people don't like truth. That's right. They'd rather believe a lie. But it doesn't negate the truth. How many of y'all understand that uh, eventually all this is going to come to an end? Amen. It's a reality. But how we face that end, that's up to you. That's up to you. That's on you. Just pray. Read on. By honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known as dying. And behold, we live as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. O oh, you Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you, our heart is enlarged. You're not straightening us, but we're straightening your bowels. Oh, how it affects our heart, Brother John. What we see, what we watch, what we do, these things affect us in such a way. Luke 10, 29. But he willing to justify himself, says unto Jesus, uh, saith unto him, uh, unto Jesus, who is, who is my neighbor? Jesus answered, said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell amongst thieves. Y'all know the story very well. There was a priest, there was a Levite, and there was a Samaritan. Do you realize that all three men had the same opportunity? All three. Everybody in this room today has an opportunity to do what's good and to do what's bad. We've all got the same opportunity. It's up to you what you do with it. See, all you have, Brother Jeff, is right now. You don't have it tomorrow. You don't have it tomorrow. The fact is, Sue, eventually, your life will, too, come to an end. 
But as long as you have breath, as long as you have an opportunity, as long as you have the capability to do something for God, you ought to, you should, you must. Because eventually, there is no praising in the grave like we read. Right now is your time. Right now. What do you do? How do you live your life? How do you praise God and what you are and what you do? What you do? Look, he's making it very personal here. What they're going through and how they are going forward. You see, all three had the same choice. But only one acted upon and made the right decision. When God gives you an opportunity to use it and utilize it for his honor and his glory, just breathe. Number two, not only, Brother Glenn, do we have opportunities and thank God for the opportunities we have, just breathe. Look with me in verse number 11. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be this is the core, this is the heart of the whole message right here. Content. Amen. <sighs> now it seems like a simple thing. It seems like a simple thing. We've been doing it for a long time. Breathe. To be content. You say, what does that mean, preacher? Content, satisfied, Amen. peace, able to breathe. Second Corinthians chapter four. Go there with me. Ooh, I like this. Oh, I like. This. Verse 8 says in 2 Corinthians 4, we are troubled on every side. You know, when Peter, when Peter was in jail, Acts chapter number 12, they had people on all four sides of him. And on top of that, Danny, they had him shackled to the floor. Huh. In the inner side of the prison. Now get a hold of this. He's in the most deep part of the prison right there. A lot of ground to make up between there and getting out of there. And they were so concerned about it that not only did they do that, they put their soldiers on each of his sides. And they got him chained to the floor. You know what Peter's doing? He's breathing. He's sleeping. Now here's the deal. In case you think I don't know what I'm talking about. A couple years back I learned that I wasn't sleeping. Because I wasn't breathing. Did you believe that? I went three and a half years with no sleep. I found out that in an hour's time I stopped breathing 64 times in one hour. That means I wasn't breathing. I quit breathing. And my body was being hurt in the process. That's true. I can show you my medical records. That's true. Not breathing. And my body was hurting because I wasn't breathing. I like to breathe. I'm doing it right now. And by the way, all you live people out there, you're doing it too. <laughs> Breathe it. It's a good thing. Yes. Now look at the scriptures. Troubled on every side. It looks bad. They're in his head, they're in his feet, they're in his sides. He's shackled to the floor. But yet he's breathing. Because he's sleeping. He's in a dream, he thinks. 
Matter of fact, as the angel gets him up and those shackles fall off of him, he steps over those soldiers and he, he goes to the door and it opens right open and he goes on out from there to the outside of the prison and those gates open up. He gets to the outside of the city and those gates open up. And finally the Bible says when Peter comes to himself, you know what he thought he was doing? Sleepwalking. And I've done that before myself too. Don't y'all look me strange. But he was breathing. Look at the scriptures right here. Yet not distressed. We're perplexed. But not in despair. Persecuted. But not forsaken. Cast down. But not destroyed. How many of y'all have ever been to that place? All these things look like the walls are caving in around about you. Looks like the world is falling out from underneath your feet. And yet, here you still are. Amen. Here you still are. Right. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. You're always, Brother Tim, going to go through things and have hurdles and obstacles and all like that. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in your body. Gives God an opportunity to show his hand of might in your life. It's why you go through what you go through. Amen. Showing what a good God that we serve. Right now our brother Ed is going through what he's going through. It is a fact of life. It's a point of man wants to die. It's a reality. But how he faces that and how we help him to face that dictates upon you and I how we embrace this moment that God brings us to. always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. What you believe, Brother Jeff, is what you're going to talk about. Amen. What you believe. You're going to talk about it. He said, that's what I do. I speak by what I believe. So having the same spirit of faith according to this written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus shall present us with you knowing. So when a simple little thing like death comes to knocking, Brother Alex, I know it ain't the end. I know it ain't the end. Because I know I too will rise again like my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 reminds us that we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Isn't it good to know that? Isn't it good to have that assurance, Brother Glenn, to look forward to that day? Amen. Knowing that? Yes. Praise God. So when things like death come a knocking, just pray. Because we know the outcome is going to be so much greater, Brother Carl, because God has it in his hands. Just breathe. Just breathe. First Corinthians chapter number nine, go there with me. For I know whom I have believed in and have persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. What day? The day when death comes to knock him. I'll have victory over it. Why? Because my Lord and Savior got victory over it. Just keep breathing. 1 Corinthians 9, verse number 19. For though I be free from all men, yet if I make myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Unto the Jews I became man as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law as without law being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak I became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. 
What Paul's talking about here is he used and utilized every opportunity, every chance. When the moment arose, he stepped forward and run from it. He embraced it, whatever it was. Right now is such a time as that. What if food gets scarce? What if fuel becomes null and void? What if this world that we know is turned upside down? What will we do? How would we react? Will we panic and, and run to the streets like our hair's on fire and fall down and start crying, going into the fetal position? Is that what we're going to do? Is that going to help anybody? Is that going to strengthen anybody? Is that going to enlighten anybody? Or are we going to stand there following after the things of God, trusting in what God's Word has already dictated and revealed to us? Are we going to be that solid rock that people can come to for those answers that they're going to be seeking out? How are you going to react to what is coming out in front of us? Are we going to fall apart or are we going to continue to keep breathing through the process? Amen. You women that have given birth, <coughs> what is the one thing that the doctor keeps telling you as you're going through delivery, as you're sitting there in such turmoil, that travail of a woman, that, that birth pains as you're delivering and going through all that? You're ready to pull your hair out and scream to your high lungs. But breathe. Breathe. Keep breathing. Come on. Are you doing your breaths? Keep breathing. Right? Why? Because it helps the process. It helps the process. It's not like you're not going to go through things, but it's how we go through things. It's messing up on the road, John. I'll stay right here. I said you in there. In that thing. So you in right there. Yeah. Archie, right here. I'll have to behave myself. <laughs> Go to First Timothy chapter six. <laughs> Verse number three says, "If any man teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strives of words." Whereof cometh envy, strife, ravings, and evil surmises. You realize there's some people that all they want to do is disrupt and torment and create confusion. They like that. They live for that. They are about the drama. I got news for you. That will not help you. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness from such withdrawal thyself. It's almost like we've heard the statement, those who have all the toys makes all the rules. Really? i got news for you. Get all this world you want. You're not the one I'm listening to. Amen. You're not the one I'm following. I'm following the one that created this world. I'm looking at him. Because in all honesty, he overcome this world. And by the way, while he was here, he walked around like a poor guy. Sure did. And he loved them and they hated him for it. And yet, there you go. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Now what does that mean? That means, Annalie, how you go through the difficulties and the hardships of this life? And still breathe. There's great blessing in that. You know, it was like the sharecropper when he lost his children, lost his wife, lost his crops, and the farmer couldn't understand why he was still praising God. That's godliness with contentment. He was at peace because he knew no matter what happens, heaven awaits. David lost a child. Do y'all remember that? And when David lost that child, he got up and cleaned himself up and he asked for food to be set before him. And they couldn't understand it. They said, when the child was sick, you were bad and bleeding God. You, you wouldn't eat. You were, you were in a distraught situation and now the child is dead and now you're wanting to eat. You want to clean yourself up. What's going on here, David? So you don't understand why the 
child was still here. And I was hoping and praying that God would spare the child. But now God has took him. I don't want him back. But I'm going to go to where he is one day. And that I'm okay with. You see, when we have the right perspective on things, Brother Carl, it changes the way that we view, the way that we go, and the way that we act in the process. I remember as my dad was about ready to pass. My brothers, they said, you know, Shane, I know you got to go pick your boys up and you got to get Seth from the, at the airport and everything. I know you got to go pick them up. What if you don't make it back before dad passes away? I said, I'm all right with that. I said, dad's going to pass. It's okay. He's, going, he's on his way over now. He's, he's, he's passing on right now. I said, if he goes before I get back, I'm okay with that. I've had 50 plus years with him. And that ain't going to change. I rejoice knowing where my dad's at today. Today, if Brother Ed is crossed on over and went on home to be with the Lord, I'm okay. Because I know where he's at. And it's in the process of that now what kicks into my mind is Sister Kim and how she's going to need us to be the brothers and sisters in Christ as, as what we say that we are. And I'm okay with that. Because I know ultimately, Brother Glenn, there's more to the story. And one day we'll all be back together. But until then, we're going to keep going forward. Amen. How in the world can you take a thing like that? It's because Tammy is what we know. It's what we know, not what we don't. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and snare, and to many foolish and hurtful lust, which down men in destruction and perdition. You see, they're looking to the wrong things for the time. They're focusing on the wrong things, and that causes them to falter and to fall. Y'all remember studying about the 1929 collapse of Wall Street? Y'all remember reading about guys that were jumping out of windows? What a tragic, tragic deal. The fact that they thought that money was everything and now that it looked like they were going to lose it all, brother, but they, they, they killed themselves. Or, what a fool. Let me put it this way. I came into this world with nothing. Amen. And God gave me everything I've got. Amen. And when I leave this world, I won't leave with nothing. Because I have the Lord. Amen. So much to rejoice over. So much to be thankful for. They fall into temptation. There, that, that, that they, they get bound down to their own destruction about. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some have coveted after they have erred from the faith, pierced themselves through with many arrows and uh, many sorrows, he says, but thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Run to thou art also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. You see, I found out, Brother Gene, what's really important. What's really valuable. Why? The last verse. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 13. And we'll wrap it all up. Look what he says. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For you said, I will never leave thee, Amen. nor forsake thee. Amen. Amen. I like breathing. Been doing it a long time. And as long as I'm able, I'm going to continue to keep breathing, Miss Louise. Because that's what glorifies God. Yep. The world may get turned upside down. Matter of fact, chances of that, very good. Amen. The world may be going crazy. Brother Taylor, <laughs> it is. Amen. But in all honesty, let the sea get dried up and the mountains crumble into the sea. 
I'm still going to praise God. I'm going to still glorify Him. I'm going to keep on breathing, Sherry, because that's what God wants out of us. So when others mislead to see us, you see, Brother Lonnie understood that. When he left that room that day, going into surgery, when he left that room that day, going into surgery, he had a song in his heart. We talked about that. I went in and I told him, I said, Lonnie, I said, every time I go into any situation, I always sing. That helps me. You mean, during the difficult times? Especially during the difficult times. Having a song in your heart. Amen. Because you realize it's more than the moment. It's more than the moment. It's bigger than that. This is temporal. I'm not looking for the temporal. I'm looking for the eternal. Amen. And because of that, I'll have the strength, Sean, to go forward. And not only will it affect my life, but those around me that watch and see, it will affect their life too. So y'all do me a favor. Just breathe. Amen. Keep breathing. It's where we started. And until he takes me home to glory, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue to keep breathing. Keep trusting. Keep relying. Keep depending. Keep looking to the Lord. Because I started with him. And praise God. I'll forevermore be with him. Amen. I'm going to keep breathing. I don't know what's out in front of you. I'm not a fortune teller. <coughs> but I can guarantee you this. No matter what comes in your way. He didn't told you in the scriptures right there. Hebrews 13. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So what do you have to worry about? If God be for you, who can be against you? With God on my side, no, no, that when I close my eyes to this world, I'll open them in eternity and forevermore be with my Lord. Until that day, I'm going to keep praising. I'm going to keep praising. Because let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. And in the process, I'll let what God has put before me, Brother Carl, be a testimony to all those that see it. Because they'll say one thing about Brother Shane. He did like to breathe. Let's pray. Lord, as we bow before you, we thank you for the opportunity. Bring us to our knees. Thy will to be done. Please, Lord, use these things. Utilize these things. And Lord, we do ask of our dear sister at such a time as this. But be with all these things, dear Lord, according to your will. Thank you, and help us to breathe. In Christ's name, amen. amen. All stand with Facebook, John. Facebook, 78. God's going to heart you come. Come on, right in. Jesus is tenderly calling his home. Oh!
engines are praying. We'll give them a time. I'm glad I don't go it alone. I'm glad I have a God that loves me beyond all measure. I guarantee if you spend a little time just talking to those that are around you, you might find out that other people are going through things too. Difficulties, hardships, and heartaches. Things that are affecting them in a great way. And then as you talk and you find out what they're going through, might be a great opportunity just to remind them how good God is. That even most darkest, difficult times, God loves us and God has the power to deliver us in the process. Might be a little something that will help them to breathe. Might be something that gives them strength to go the extra mile. Because ultimately, that's what we're here to do. To be alive, to be an encourager. You see, we all go through things. But how you face it, how you go through it, makes all the difference in the world. Ain't God good? Amen. I'm glad I don't have to go it alone. And by the way, you don't either. I'm going to say it like this and go to Lord in prayer and be dismissed this morning. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, don't leave this building. Come to me or come to one of these others and ask them how you too can go to heaven when you die. Because I'd hate to face what we're fixing to face without having the Lord. He gave me my breath. He has sustained my breath. And when all is said and done, he'll be there when I take my last breath. But until then, I'm going to keep breathing. Thank God for that opportunity. Amen. Appreciate you being here. Continue to keep praying. There's several on our prayer list that need your prayer. Right now, Miss Debbie's mom is in uh, rehab, and she's getting rehab. Danny, I guess your dad's in rehab there, isn't he? No, folks, today, today or tomorrow. Today or tomorrow. Keep praying for Bill Christian there. Lift him up in your prayers and others. Pray for Miss Joyce. We mentioned about Miss Joyce the other night and everything. Uh, continue to keep praying for her. Miss Kay, she's got back issues there. Pray for her. Lift Kim up in your prayers today. Uh, let it take its course. Let her have her space. When the time is right, God will show us. But we'll be there for her when the time is right. Amen. She's our dear sister, and we pray for her. Pray for her family. Miss Audrey, and Brother Ted, and Susan, and the rest. Because they're all being affected by it, uh, as I know you are too. So uh, pray for each other, lift each other up. It's never easy, never easy. But in all honesty, I'm glad it's not, because it means so much, and it really does. But anyways, appreciate you being here, Brother Glenn. It's good that uh, man keep working the overcomers. Sixteen, sure did look good. Sure did look good. Keep on keeping on, Brother Alex. It's good to see you this morning. Good, good to hear that things are starting to heal there. Amen. If you will, Brother Alex, this is in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. And we thank you for the message today, Father. We know our hearts are, are troubled and burdened with several members and brothers and sisters in this church that just need your loving touch. And Father, we ask that you'll put them in your hands, take care of them, Help them through these troubling times. Father, just continue to be with them. Let them mend and heal. Get them through these dark, dreary times, Father. If there's anywhere you don't know you as their personal Savior, Father, and have a personal relationship, we ask that they'll come forward before they leave and take care of this. We thank you for all you do and how you lead, guide, and direct us. Bring us back at the next appointed time. These things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.